Uh, hi, thank you for hanging around for the last talk. Um, so this is all joint work with Will Perkins at University of Birmingham. And I'll be talking about a uh, slightly different model than what we have seen in, in the session, uh, a bipartite stochastic block model. So let me uh, first introduce this. So um, we have two sets of vertices. So I'm going to call this set v uh, V1 and V2 with N1 and N2 vertices. And I'm going to split um, each set uh, roughly equally. So I'm going to have two sets of uh, communities, A1, B1, and A2, B2. And then if you, uh, so imagine that um, if I label this uh, the A1 uh, with plus and B1 with minus, and similarly for the, for the right-hand side, then the way I'm going to uh, draw the edges in this model is as follows. So for each edge uh, of the same type, so plus, plus, or minus, minus, I'm going to add it with the probability delta times p, where delta is a uh, constant in between 0 and 2, but not 1, because 1, uh, as I'm going to define it, uh, will, will correspond to the random case. And p is a function of uh, n1 and n2, so the number of vertices. And, uh, and then the edges of the different types, so plus, minus, minus, plus, I'm going to add it uh, with probability 2 minus delta times p. Um, and for the purpose of this talk, imagine that this uh, right-hand side is much larger than the left-hand side. And this is due to a reduction that I'm going to describe um, on the next slide. So this is the model that I'm going to focus on. And the, the goal is to recover the labels of the uh, left-hand side of vertices, so A1 and B1. Um, so uh, in, in the stochastic block model, I'm only given the rectangular adjacency matrix. And the goal, as I said, to get the planted assignment on the, on the left-hand side. And my two definitions of how well I performed the recovery is as follows. So I'm going to say that uh, I detected the partition if I compute a vector that agrees with the actual labels on, uh, on at least half the fraction of the vertices, so better than, than random. And I'm going to say uh, I recover the partition if, uh, if I compute a vector that agrees with the planted assignment on 1 minus little of 1 fraction of vertices. So this uh, uh, recovery in my, in my definition is stronger than uh, detection. So uh, as I said, uh, why, why do we care about this bipartite stochastic block model? Uh, it was actually an intermediate step in um, recovering solutions in planted problems in uh, Feldman, Perkins, and Mambala. And two examples of, uh, of such problems were so random hypergraph partitioning and also uh, planted case set. And so uh, in, the, in the more general planted constraint satisfaction problems, uh, we plant an assignment of the literals, sigma, and then we draw clauses according to a distribution Q. And I'm going to, uh, and we, we choose a distribution Q such that only satisfiable formulas will be produced. Um, so reducing the planted case set problem uh, will give the vertices uh, n1 and n2 uh, of size, so n1, say, n, and then n2 is uh, uh, n to the k minus 1. So much, that's my, much larger than, uh, than the vertices on the left-hand side. And for the rest of the talk, in order to make the thresholds more um, apparent, l let's consider n1 to be n and n2 to be n, squ n squared. So for the rest of the talk, that's, um, those are my parameters. And just to give you a very brief idea of the spectral methods that have been applied to recover the partition. So a very standard result, McSherry, um, re, uh, recovers the partition when the edge density um, is uh, O of 1 over N. And, but the, a typical analysis of spectral algorithms is that the second singular value of the adjacency matrix must be much larger than the spectral norm of the noise matrix. So that's what I need in order for the spectral algorithms to work. Um, but here, in ma for, for, this, uh, for this model, the second largest uh, singular value is um, uh, p uh, times n to the 3 halves. And then the norm of the noise matrix is n root p. So for the, for the par parameters that I want, actually, um, my, the spectral methods should not work. And uh, Feldman, Perkins, and Vampala have shown that uh, subsample power iteration will recover the partition in this model uh, with high probability when, when the edge density is n to the minus 3 halves. So the questions that we set out to, uh, to investigate are if, if the second largest uh, singular value is less than the norm of the, sp of the noise matrix, 
um, can we still apply the simplest thing we can do? So SVD. We compute the second largest eigenvector of the adjacency matrix, and then um, we round the entries, and then based on that, we, we assign the labels of the vertices. So, um, so th this is the first question that we, we wanted to look at. And uh, second of all, when is it even possible to do anything in this model? So what's the optimal threshold for, um, for detection in the bipartite stochastic block model? So our, uh, our results will be twofold. Let me start with the sharp reconstruction um, impossibility results. So if the edge density is less than, the, is less than uh, 1 over delta minus 1 squared um, n to the 3 halves, then no algorithm can detect the partition with high probability. So it's informa uh, information theoretically impossible to do uh, better than random. And the idea, if you're familiar with mosel neiman slide, um, is to couple the model to a broadcast model on a multi-type Galton-Watson tree. In their case, it was a two-type. Um, in our case, it's a multi-type Galton-Watson tree. Um, on the other hand, if P is larger than 1 plus epsilon, uh, divided by uh, delta minus 1 squared n to the 3 halves. So it's, uh, on, it's exactly like uh, the sharp threshold before for any fixed uh, epsilon. There exists a polynomial uh, time algorithm that detects the partition on the left-hand side. Um, so the idea is to reduce the bipartite case to a usual stochastic block model on, uh, on the left-hand side induced by paths of length 2 in the bipartite graph. And then we apply the, as a black box the algorithms um, from mosel neiman Sly or Masulier. Um, so just to briefly mention implications for planted case set. Uh, this means that we have a sharp threshold for recovery um, when, uh, when we have theta of n to the r over 2 clauses. And if you're familiar with the distribution complexity in the interest of time, I'm not going to introduce it. But this parameter r is the distribution complexity um, of, the, of the distribution that we draw the clauses from. And so the, there's a natural open question, is, is there a sharp threshold? So our reduction um, cannot do better than, than this threshold. Um, so uh, just to also mention our, the other types of our results, so the spectral uh, results, um, we introduce a, uh, another matrix. So we take the adjacency matrix, multiply by the transpose, and then we set the diagonal equal, uh, equal to zero. Um, so actually, we show that uh, this, this applying the spectral methods on this matrix will uh, detect the partition at a lower density. So uh, if, if the edge density is uh, greater than n to the minus 3 halves, then with high probability, the spectral algorithms on this matrix recovers the partition. Um, whereas the standard SVD, so on matrix M, recovers the partition at a higher density. So this very simple modification of the, of the adjacency matrix uh, improves, improves the recovery by, uh, by, a lot, uh, by quite a lot. So this is just to put into perspective sharp threshold for recovery. So when we hope to do something, well, this is where the uh, diagonal deletion uh, works. This is where the um, simple SVD works. And here is where um, the, second, the, the norm of the expectation matrix is larger than the noise matrix. So this is where afterwards where we should, we should be able to do something spectrally. So uh, finally, um, this simple diagonal deletion um, algorithm works well here. Is there a hope to do something for other planted problems? Um, and secondly, uh, again, for the planted case problem, can we do still better with the, another reduction, maybe? Uh, thank you. <laughs>